It's Wednesday, September 24, 2025, and I'm tracking a major weather system moving across the U.S., in addition to three tropical systems out in the Atlantic. And as we track all these systems, we will see some impacts for the eastern U.S. And as we track this large weather system headed towards the east coast, we will see a chance of severe weather tomorrow for much of the eastern U.S. That stretches all the way from Louisiana up into parts of New England, where we could see some isolated severe storms and even a few tornadoes. Although the risk is low, level 1 out of 5 risk for severe storms, it wouldn't surprise me if some locations are increased to a level 2 out of 5. That does include this area, which has a low risk for a tornado tomorrow, stretching from Virginia all the way up into the New York City metro area, where we have a very low risk for a tornado, but it's still not zero. And that's pretty unusual for this time of the year, late September. It's pretty much unheard of to have this kind of a risk for this area. It happens very rarely, but this is what we have in the forecast for Thursday afternoon. So this is the future forecast model going into Thursday. Notice how we have some shower and storm activity in the morning, but it's more so the afternoon round that will be the severe weather producer as we progress into the day. We could see some stronger wind gusts all the way from the Gulf up into parts of New York State and New England. But that small risk of a tornado, we can't rule that out for parts of the area from the Mid-Atlantic up into New York City. Here's a more zoomed in look at the storms as we progress into Thursday afternoon. Notice how there are some isolated stronger storms popping up in those red and orange colors there for New Jersey up into New York, parts of Delaware, Maryland. That's what we'll be watching very closely for the development of severe weather, specifically some brief spin up tornadoes. That is going to be the risk for tomorrow. These aren't the uh, this isn't the tornado risk where you'd see your house wiped off its foundation, but maybe some minor damage if a tornado does touch down. But regardless, something to watch as we push into the afternoon on Thursday. And the risk on Thursday isn't overly significant, but there's still a chance we see some rotating storms. This is what we call storm helicity, which is basically the maximum amount of rotation a storm can gather up in the atmosphere to produce potentially a tornado. And you can see there's some pockets that actually go up into New England, but New England won't have the same amount of storm energy. So we have these ingredients around some locations. You just have to have the right combination of ingredients to get a tornadic storm. Other locations won't have enough ingredients for this to happen. So here's a look at the storm energy, and you can see as we push it through the day, there's not a whole lot, but there's just enough in the afternoon tomorrow through parts of New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and even the New York City metro to get a few storms capable of actually gathering up that rotation in the mid-levels of the atmosphere and trying to produce some isolated tornadoes. The reason why the risk isn't overly high is because the storm energy level is relatively low. If this does change tomorrow, if we get some last-minute information, for tomorrow afternoon, you will see an increase in this threat. And you can follow that storm energy, that narrow line, all the way down to the Gulf, where there's really not a ton of energy with this system, but there certainly is plenty of moisture, and we will have potentially a threat of some isolated flooding with this storm again tomorrow. So here's the rainfall forecast stretching all the way from the Gulf up into the Northeast, and you can see some pockets of pretty heavy rain here. Notice as we zoom in here to Kentucky, West Virginia, there are some pockets where we could see an excess of three inches of rain. Some of this rain may come down all at once, and that is the concern where we could see some isolated flooding because of that. Now we head up to the northeast, specifically New England, where we could see some significant rainfall Thursday afternoon. Notice how there are some pockets of three plus inches of rain. The reason why it's a little more significant in this area is because there is an ongoing drought, especially for northern New England. So if this rain does come down all at once, there could be some localized flooding with this, especially for parts of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine that have been exceptionally dry over the past few months. So this is something to watch. And even though Massachusetts will see a decent amount of rain and Rhode Island, that area has seen a bit more than other locations, so the flooding will be pretty minimal as expected compared to northern New England. There's also one location that's not a part of that storm that's over on the east coast. We go out to southeastern Arizona, which will probably be put in under a flood watch as we head through tonight and into Thursday. It hasn't been issued yet, the recording of this video, but it most likely will happen. And we will see some significant rain out of isolated thunderstorms out here. So if you live in this area, have those emergency alerts enabled. This is definitely a flash flood warning uh, concern, flash flooding concern, as we push through the day on Thursday and into Friday and potentially Saturday as well. 
Now we head over to the Atlantic where we have a lot of stuff going on. Gabrielle is moving very quickly away from the U.S., so it does become Europe's problem over the next few days. But we're talking about this storm system dying out over Africa, which is kind of ironic because that's where most waves start over parts of Africa. So this thing has made the full loop. And it will be getting to places like the Azores over the next few days as a Category 1 hurricane weakening to a tropical storm and then eventually a tropical depression impacting parts of Portugal. We also have a newly formed tropical storm, Umberto, which will be heading off to the northwest. And what's unique about Umberto isn't actually the storm itself. It's what's going on to the west of Umberto. And I'll point your attention to the invest here that has just formed. This will most likely be our next tropical storm which is going to form right next to Umberto. And this could create a unique scenario that doesn't happen very often, but we could have two tropical systems right next to each other moving towards the U.S. And if that next storm system forms, it would be Imelda. That's the next storm on the list. And there's several more names on the list to go here, but the hurricane season is running out pretty soon. So we'll see how many more storms that actually form over the next few weeks here. So as we track these two storm systems over the next few days, notice how the spaghetti plots do something interesting, especially with the storm that's off to the west, most likely will be Imelda. You can see how some of those lines actually merge with the other system. Some of those lines actually push away from the system. And you also have the same thing going on with Umberto. Models are going to have a very difficult time handling this because this is a unique scenario that doesn't happen very often. So this unique scenario is called the Fujiwara effect. And basically it's when two tropical systems develop right next to each other and will start interacting with one another. And when this situation occurs, three things can happen to the storms. If one storm is stronger than the other, most likely what we'll have with Umberto this time around is Imelda, which will be the next storm that forms, will actually get absorbed by the stronger storm. So they'll basically kind of dance around one another and then one will be pushed into the other. However, if they interact with one another and they are the same strength, then you'll have one storm dance around the other storm like this, which could make it really difficult for models to figure out what's going on and give forecasters a big time headache, which we've seen this before with storms in the Pacific. Or they can actually act to repel each other. So we could see one storm go in one direction, another one go in the other direction, which if models don't pick up on this really well, we could have a shift last minute that could be a little tricky for forecasters figuring out where these storms are going to go. So this would be an interesting setup as we head through the next few days. So as the storm systems develop, they'll be heading closer to the U.S. here. And you can see Umberto really strengthening quickly. Well, Imelda, which will most likely be the next storm, does form. But notice how it's on the weaker side. This will be interesting to see how the storm systems interact but notice how there's that pocket in between the two. That's the model trying to figure out what exactly will happen in this scenario. But they'll be close enough where we most likely will see the Fujiwara effect. And that can make things really interesting for modeling going into next week. But I do think at a minimum, we're going to see at least some wave action from the storms. And from there, going into next week, we'll track these storms and see if there's any impacts for the East Coast. So this is the wave height forecast, and you can see we most likely will see some 10-foot-plus waves with the storms working their way along the East Coast. Having both systems churn up the waters will make things uh, extra rough out there. So that's something we'll be watching as we head into next week and then going into the weekend as well, even the waves getting all the way up to the New England area. So this will be the main factor for now, but there could be some other impacts into next week. So looking ahead, we have a few things to watch over the next few days. We'll be tracking Umberto as it continues to strengthen and move northwest. The second tropical system will be developing quickly and then interacting with Umberto. And we'll also watch the heat return for parts of the plains in Midwest as we will have a pretty mild start to October, but that does change later in the month. And also there's a chance of more flooding. We're already seeing that in parts of Arizona potentially as we move through tomorrow and into friday as well and then we also have some rain showers along the east coast but still some things to watch as we move through the next few days as the weather remains active the tropical system certainly will be a priority and we'll be watching that as we move into next week